Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming back and joining us today. We are continuing our story on what is an icon. Um, we remember that we saw um, icons. I did send you some homework. I did want you to know what this icon was here, but um, obviously I don't know what you're shouting at the screen, but hopefully it's a saint on a horse with a dragon and the saint seems to be controlling the dragon. So I think um, we probably most of us know who that is. I have got a guest here with me today. I could ask him and see maybe if they know. Um, did you know who what that icon is, this one? Do you think you know this one? St. George. Well done, St. George, yes. Thank you very much for helping. So I've got a little helper today. They will, we will be helping to read. So we went through and we understand that we bless ourselves first before we kiss an icon because we become the same as the icon. In other words, we become holy. So if we kiss something holy, then really we are showing that we are holy as well so that we are one family and equal so that we can help each other. So these are the icons that we showed of the birth of Jesus, and this is when he came Palm Sunday. So today we've got a new one today. And today, some beautiful colors, because my guest today is a very nice, very good artist, a young artist, and he loves doing a lot of painting, especially birds. And these colors are amazing. And that's the nice thing about icons as well. They make it very interesting for us to learn from it. So we will start and say, this is another icon that shows us the Lord's resurrection. We venerate the icon on Holy Pascha. Holy Pascha is the word for Easter. So on Holy Easter, which is normally the Saturday and the Sunday, we venerate this icon, which for us confirms that Christ was risen from below, from where people were in prison because he brought out prisoners. Look, these were prisoners. They were held in this place, which um, was called Hades. And these prisoners are Adam and Eve. So he went and rescued the first prisoners. They were the first ones to be put into prison. And he went and rescued them. He took them out. And he took them out to take them back home, heaven. And this is why now we all eventually, hopefully, will be living with Christ in heaven forever. Now, this seems another nice eye picture as well. It seems that this family are traveling somewhere. It looks like they must be probably somewhere in a village because they can seem to walk to where they're going. It looks like they're going somewhere. I'll ask my guest to read so that we know what's going. What does that say here, do you think? Maria loves to go to church. So we have, our understanding is, I probably think that this must be Maria. So, and she seems quite excited. And they're on their way to church. The church is there. They must have been, there's houses here, you can see where the village was. And they're taking the path to church. Now this looks more like how the icons look like in in the churches you can see that they're on the wall they have visual they have lamps that light them that shows that these saints are alive because you won't have a, a lamp for something that is not alive to show that they are in our lives to still help us and in the church there are many icons Maria especially loves to venerate the icon of the Theodorus. As we said before, venerate means kiss. So she loves to kiss the icon of the Panagia, the Virgin Mary, the Theodorus, um, because it's like visiting um, a family member, and they're quite excited to give uh, venerate. So this is how icons look like in the church, and I will show you in a minute how my ones look like. 
Um, it could be something similar to this. But we have something maybe that might look similar to this. And these are how icons sometimes look in a different place. And my guest will read to you um, where this place is. Maria also has many icons in her house, in her family icon corner, where Maria says her evening and morning prayers. There are icons of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Theotokos, St. John the Baptist, St. Anna and St. Stephen. In front of them burns an oil lamp. Maria's daddy refills the oil lamp when it burns low. So as you can see, my guest has actually explained to you that what the church has, we can have in our own home as well. We might not have exactly the same icons, but we will have maybe icons um, of our family names. And you will see that here is what we would call an icon corner. So where a family can come together and they can do, like it says here, offer morning and evening prayers. Um, you might even have an, uh, your own icon in your bedroom, you, but, and, and there might be other icons you know, in different parts of your house. But when we bring them together like this, it gives us the opportunity to have um, what they call focus. In other words, we can all stand there and expect that what, what we're going to be doing here is praying. There's no distractions, there's no television there, there's no other things. Um, so we can just help us pray. So this is how far we're going today. So we can see how wonderful orthodoxy uses these beautiful things called icons because it's showing us not exactly how maybe the people looked, but that the people did exist and the people are still alive because we could still have this veneration this love, um, this opportunity. So as I said to you, I'm going to show you the one that I have. It doesn't look exactly 100% the same, but this is what my, you know, my ones would look like in the church. So a little bit like it shows in the book. So in the book, you see it looks like that, and it's a little bit similar. And in my house, if I was upstairs, you will see that we have a collection of icons. Um, it's not exactly the 100% like this, but what I might do later on, um, I will go upstairs and um, I will show you next week. I will show you next week, maybe in a photograph of what we have upstairs. So, icons are very important, but we have to also remember that these people were humans so that means every human in our life, its potential is to become a saint. So we have to respect each other the same way we respect these icons. Because we can't say we respect icons and we don't respect each other. Because then that means they're not in our lives in the correct way. So this is a family that can't live with us, but they live with us in this way. So it's a very, very big family, the Orthodox Church, and we're all related in this wonderful way. So they all come and help us all. They won't just help just a few people. So thank you very much for joining us today. And what we do is we will read the rest of it, hopefully next week. Have a nice day. Do you want to say bye, guest? Bye.